you could see my screen now. <clears throat> okay, so. One sec. Can you see my screen? <clears throat> yes, sir. I can see. Everybody? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I can also. <clears throat> okay. So, um, some of you have already attended my one of the demo sessions, so it's the same content. So, let me just go with it. It's basically um, okay. contains two sections. One is what is all SAP about. The second one is SAP MM. Um, I know min most of you are aware of the SAP. So, so I'll I'll just go quickly with the the first session. And then second session is about uh, purely about SAP MM, the various functionalities that SAP MM offers and all. So <clears throat> I'll just quickly go with SAP and then I'll go with SAP MM in particular. Right. <clears throat> so in the next say half an hour time we'll go with what is SAP ER I mean, what is ERP, SAP and its evolution. Are these architecture, SAP are functionality in various new dimensional products, mysap.com and the internet, various tools uh, which we use it for configuring R3 system. Um, sorry to say, um, but um, I want you guys to be on mute. Okay, so what you have to do is, you, okay, um, you, you can be on mute. If I if I say mute all, are you still able to hear me? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, it's um, Yes. Yeah, I want you guys to be on mute yourself so that you know uh, the background noises will not disturb the others. In case if you want to, if, in case if you want to speak or if you want, if you have a question, unmute yourself and then ask the question so that now the other people will not get disturbed. Yeah. Okay, sir. All right, <clears throat> and then we dis we will discuss about I mean what are the reasons for SAP success, advantages of using SAP, various components that we use in SAP uh, and SAP scope, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> ERP as you, we all know stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. So when we are talking about Enterprise Resource Planning, each and every enterprise, whether it is in service industry or it's a manufacturing industry or if it's a banking, whatever industry it could be, you will have various resources. And the resources of any industry is, I would say, let me... So this is my, um, I would say, board for me. Okay, so resources of any industry is one material. Okay, so machines, material, money, right? And what is the last one? Management. Okay, so these are called five M's. So these are the uh, tools for any industry, any, I mean, I would say resources for any industry. So how effectively or how best you use all these resources in order to maximize your productivity and hence the profitability um, is what does matters to the company or to the, any organization. So to minimize the cost or to minimize the effort and to maximize the productivity, you will be using a software tool that what we call it as ERP. So ERP by definition, you can say this way, it's a ERP software facilitates the flow of information among all the processes of an organization's supply chain from procure to pay, including accounting human resources, right? So <clears throat> your ERP software should facilitate the flow of information across all the processes of an organization whether you know for example a new employee joined in the organization his employee information or the personal details will be added in 
HR system, it could be people soft, it could be something else. The data that is maintained in the HR system needs to get reflected in accounts payable module for the month end salary payment to the employee. So therefore, the data which is maintained in the HR system, it could be HR module if, if we are talking about SAP as tool or you might use a different tool. Okay, you might use a different tool. Even from that tool, the HR data, the people's, people's data, or the personal data of a new employee or an existing employee needs to be available for the AP module, accounts payable module or accounts team for the salary to be paid by end of every month. That's one example. The other way is you might have a, a system for managing the vendors a separate system for managing the vendors where all your vendor master data might have been created or maintained right so vendor data is there in one system but you know you will be using a different tool or a different system for purchasing so when you raise a purchase order and when it is submitted to the sub potential supplier once it delivers the material right you will be doing goods receipt and an invoice needs to be paid so therefore, at the time of payment, the data that needs to be looked at is vendor's bank account. Where is it maintained? It's maintained in the vendor management tool, uh, a third party system. So therefore, that vendor master data that is maintained in the third party system needs to be available for your SAP system for the accounts payable team to pay to the vendor with reference to the invoice posted with reference to your PO. So this flow of information, what we are talking about is whether it is across the departments or across the systems, the flow of information should be very, very smooth and it should flow without losing any piece of information. And that's where your ERP facilitates all this possibility. So ERP software eliminates the common problem of multiple incompatible software systems and databases in use in the departments or functional areas of many corporations. Like I said, just an example, <clears throat> if you have multiple systems, <clears throat> there is bound to be an integration issues. Like I said, vendor management system, a third party system, accounts payable system is your SAP system. In case if the data is not smooth, okay, or for whatever reasons, if the data is not getting transmitted properly to uh, SAP or from SAP to that vendor management tool, you will have a problems. So compatibility issues. If you use a one system, an ERP system, <coughs> which can facilitate all these functionalities, you will not lose any data. <coughs> Therefore, the compatibility issues can be avoided. For example, if I have to say, sometime back, JD Edwards was acquired by PeopleSoft. PeopleSoft in turn was acquired by Oracle. But till today, people start applications are not running on Oracle platform. That's because of the compatibility issues. So Oracle, though PeopleSoft is Oracle's product right now, <coughs> Oracle is still having problems managing PeopleSoft applications on Oracle platform. So that's the reason they are still selling PeopleSoft as a separate application. <coughs> that's the compatibility problems that I was referring to. Whereas with SAP, you don't have such problems. Everything is SAP module, everything was uh, uh, built on top of SAP R3 architecture, so you won't have any problems. So therefore, with one integrated comprehensive system, which could be distributed internationally with one database whose process run more smoothly with up-to-date information availability throughout the corporation. That means, if you use one system, I mean, avoid using one system for a uh, what you call vendor management, another system for accounts payable, one more system for you know purchasing. Instead of using those many systems, if you use only one system, which should be a comprehensively integrated across all modules, and which can be distributed across geographies, which should contain only one database, therefore everybody can see the same set of information throughout the organization. Whether you could be CEO or a regional manager, or an individual user who created a, a purchasing document or an invoice document, everybody will see the same set of a same piece of information if, if the database is only single database. 
Now, based on the scope of various applications which were um, you know, available in the ERP market, the ERP solutions have been segregated broadly into two areas. One is high-end ERP solutions, second one is mid-range ERP solutions. In the high-end ERP solutions, I have I've added SAP, Oracle and PeopleSoft. The one which is maintained in the brackets, parenthesis, is called programming language, ABAP slash 4, stands for Advanced Business Application Programming Language, 4th generation. Similarly, for Oracle, it has got its own language, what we call the structured query language. PeopleSoft has got its own language. Same is the case with mid-range applications like JD Advanced, Bond, um, Ramp, or so on and so forth. Right? So if you look at it, uh, SAP has got various function, I mean, uh, you know, applications in all the modules, I would say, all the functional areas. Oracle is very strong in finance, but poor in manufacturing. Same as people, PeopleSoft is very good at HR and the rest of the applications, it doesn't have the strong base. JD Edwards is a good manufacturing tool. Similarly, Barn is having good manufacturing capabilities and and bit of financial capabilities. But they don't have applications in all the areas. I guess the rest of the folks have joined. So, Sundar Avgaru and Lakshmi, welcome to the group. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Lakshmi and Sundar Rao? Okay, so I guess still they have some issues. Let them get clarified. <clears throat> All right. Now, <clears throat> SAP as ERP. So where does SAP fit in the ERP system? We will have another slide. If you could look at it, if this is my ERP um, wheel, you could see for each of the, you know, um, folk, I've got different departments. Let's say you take any industry or any organization, you will have all these departments like inventory department, production department, accounting, human resource, delivery, that is um, what you call uh, distribution, business intelligence, reporting, sales, engineering, so on and so forth. So, only, I mean, the flow of information across all these departments should be smooth. Only then the business will run smooth. Otherwise, if you don't have proper communication between your purchasing department and inventory department, or your sales department and delivery department, you will have lots of problems. You don't know what sales department has promised to its customers. So therefore, delivery department cannot or will not be able to deliver the goods to the respective customers. Similarly, if you don't have proper information about purchasing to, it, to the inventory management or if you don't have information about the material availability in the stores, then the purchasing department will not be able to procure the materials. So here the, the, the inference is, though they, these departments, they work independently, but they are interconnected. So you have to have one tool which should be able to facilitate this interconnectivity across the departments. Sometimes I call this as department, sometimes I call it as a functional area, sometimes I call it as a process area, or sometimes it is module, if I have to say from SAP perspective, right? So you need to have an ERP tool which will facilitate the flow of information across all these departments, though they work independently, right? So let's try to understand what is SAP. As you know, SAP is a product of SAP AG company. AG stands for limited in German language. So it's, it, it, it was founded by five German engineers who used to work in IBM uh, in the 1970s, I mean to say in 71. So they established this company in 1971 in a place called Mannheim. And then uh, the, their initial vision while you know developing or establishing this company was to develop a standard application software for real-time business processing. 
what do you mean by real time business processing real time business processing is nothing but your system should be capable enough to to process the data that's created just a minute ago just a second ago that is what we call it as real time business processing it's not that the, your system should be capable of processing historical data no apart from processing historical data whatever data that you have maintained or someone else has maintained just a few seconds ago that needs to be available for processing okay when i say processing you might be doing some action on that particular data so that's their vision when they started this company sap was market leader in industrial enterprise application area its market share is about 30% in erp sap has got presence in more than 50 countries that means sap has got its own offices in more than 50 countries sap's employee strength is 50 plus who is joined is this sundara or lakshmi hello hello sundara garani hello avunandi sir just ipudu open ayindi all right not a problem at last you are there all right so we have just started the sap um, demo session which i have already um, gone through and so um, and then sap has got more than 1 lakh customers or more than 100000 customers across 120 countries with more than 10 million users as you might be knowing sap license fee is user based based on number of users that you wanted to have based on that only sap charges the customers so that's the reason i did specify the, the user uh, strength sap's market share in india is about 60% 600 new installations per month across the world that's the sap's strength so sap strength why everybody goes for sap why not the other mod why I, other erp software tools the basic reason why everybody goes for sap is SAP strength lies in its high degree of integration mainly for large global corporations okay the reason like i said the integration between various modules or the integration between you know one company located in uk another company located in us maybe some other country company located in india so the cross company integration or the cross module integration or the cross processes integration is very very tight and secure that's the reason uh, for sap success significant presence in global fortune 500 companies means all all the fortune 500 companies a majority of them are running their business on sap systems okay so let's try to understand what is sap and its evolution okay i should have given you what is sap definition or the the, the full form of sap sap stands for systems applications and products in data processing that's the full form of sap okay so in the next half an hour we will try to understand what are those systems what applications sap uses and what are the products that are available from sap so like i said when 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 they i mean after establishing the company in 1971 in 1972 they have developed a software application they name it as sap r1 stands for real r1 stands for real time single tier architecture you know in those 70s in 70s and 80 yeah i think in 70s only uh, we don't have this much of technology we don't have this what we call as client server technology available so those days everything i mean if, if some companies business is running on on a computer it means there used to be only one computer or each and every computer that the company uses they will have all the applications all the databases etc it means the current client server technology was not there so therefore they named it as sap r1 it was implemented sap r1 was implemented in a tractor manufacturing company but that was a failure so sap is first attempt was failure so based on the lessons that they have learned uh, in the in that failed attempt they have modified their application and they have added few more features and they have released next version in 1975 they named it as sap r2 
Okay, so during that point of time, they have, they had financial applications, sales and distribution, and of course inventory management related applications. In in 1975, this R2 SAP R2 was implemented for uh, an American chemical manufacturing company called ICI Chemicals. So the first successful SAP implementation is for ICI Chemicals. That was in 1975. So since 1975, SAP is keep on, you know, adding new features to the existing applications, or they are either modifying or enhancing the uh, existing applications. As you can see here, these are the various releases which SAP has done um, since 92. Why I kept 92? That's because of R3 version which we have been currently using. Right? So between 1975 and 1993, SAP has added few more applications. SAP has modified some of its applications and then, you know, keep on releasing, releasing like that. So in between 1975 to 1993, as you might be knowing, those late 70s and 80s or even 90s also, those were the days where uh, there is a boom for IBM mainframes. So mainframes means what? They are nothing but mainframes is a software on which the business used to run. So SAP, what they did was during these years, okay? SAP has developed the SAP applications to run parallelly along with mainframe applications on mainframe computers. And then this was happened, uh, this has been continued up to 1993. Then in 1993, SAP has modified the architecture of, uh, of, of its applications and then they come up with a new architecture called SAP R3, real time single, th sorry, three-tier architecture. So this is further, I mean, because of the further enhancements happened in the client server technology. So since this 1993 until today, as you can see here, these are the releases. 1992 SAP R3 version 1, 1993 same year, release 2, release 3, like that SAP keep on released, I mean, keep on, uh, I mean, introduced its versions into the market. The most recent version available right now is SAP R3, what we call it as ECC 6.0, Enhancement Pack 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 has been mentioned here, but there is a sixth Enhancement Pack which was released into the market for the customers and um, we are actually upgrading our system to Enhancement Pack 6 right now. So. And then, like this, they have, yeah, that, that's how the SAP was evaluated, right? So now, you, as you could see here, until ECC 6.0, SAP has modified so many things, like, you know, SAP R3 4.6, then SAP R3 4.7, SAP after 4, I mean, since 4.7, they started this enterprise version. Means, uh, everything is component. So it means if you want ECC, ECC is just a component, server component. If you want SRM, it's just another server component. If you want SCM, supply chain management, another component of SAP. So this component, object or component version has been made from uh, uh, from SAP version 4.7 onwards. Even after 4.7 release also, uh, year after release, SAP is to, I mean, introduce this new components, ECC is 5.0, 6.0. So after 6.0, SAP said no more versions, means there will not be any ECC 7.0, but instead of that, we let, let us release, you know, patches. Like, you know, Windows, Microsoft releases patches. Similarly, SAP also started releasing, uh, or rather, you know, followed that approach, ECC 6.0, Enhancement Pack 1 contains certain functionalities. Enhancement Pack 2 contains additional functionalities. Enhancement, 5, Enhancement Pack 5 contains few more additional functionalities and it removes all the bugs available in the previous versions. So that's how the SAP has been evaluated. Now, we were discussing about the architecture. So this is what is meant by R3 architecture. 
right? So you will have three layers, what we call it as a presentation layer, an application layer and a database layer. I'll just give you an example. Probably I would have used the same example even in the class earlier. For example, we all use you know Gmail account or Yahoo account, mail accounts, right? So we access our mail account from our machine, laptop or desktop, um, right? So one, once we go with, for example, let me let me show you here. Just a second. Let's say if I have to access, if I have to access my Yahoo Messenger, I'll just double click it, right? So when I, this is what we call it as a presentation layer. See Yahoo Messenger, is it available? You see here, this is what we call it as a GUI, graphical user interface. Whatever the component responsible for, you know, adding or displaying the screen, that's all I wanted on my machine. When I go with user and password and say sign in, it will log into the Yahoo Messenger application which would have been there in the Yahoo server. Where is Yahoo server located? I don't mind wherever it is located. It would be located in UK or it would have been located in uh, US, doesn't matter. So therefore what I'm trying to say here is, in the client layer or the presentation layer, where people like you and me will be sitting, okay, we will have user IDs. So with when like when I instantiated Yahoo Messenger, a GUI screen, the login screen has appeared. That login screen page only available or the login application only is installed on my machine. So once I give the user ID and password, it looks for the validation application for the user ID and password in the Yahoo Messenger. That Yahoo Messenger is one application available in the Yahoo server. So you could see in the presentation layer which contains only the GUI components. Whereas the application layer is installed either on one or multiple machines they are installed on the servers. Similarly in the database layer you will have where the database which actually stores the data. So as an end user, if I log into, if I wish to log into Yahoo Messenger, you see here I enter my user ID and password. So therefore, that user ID and password is validated in the Yahoo server, which would have been there in UK or US or some other place. If it is valid, then the system will allow me to log into Yahoo Messenger. And then from there I can either, if I wish to chat, I can chat with somebody or if I wish to you know, give a call via Vivo IP, I can do so. Whatever I wanted to do, I can do it. All the data, for example, chatting or Vivo IP calls, etc., they will get saved in database, Yahoo server. So that database is this one. Similarly, in SAP, whether you are an end user as working as a buyer or a consultant or someone else, all the data that you enter from here, gets processed in the respective applications and that application data will get saved in one database. Okay? Because it is one database, though this guy has created a purchase order, if somebody wanted to see, he can see the same data as what he displayed or what he maintained. Okay? Now let's try to understand the functionality of SAP R3. Like I said, SAP is a SAP contains suite of applications. SAP has got applications in financial accounting, controlling, asset management, human resource, workflow, project systems, MM, WM, SD, PP, PM, QM, warehouse management, so on and so forth. You name any application, SAP has got a solution for that. So, so that's the reason SAP is very, very robust and SAP scope is very large. Therefore, SAP was part of high-end ERP solution. Now, like I said, you see here, if I use SAP, as I said, SAP has got solutions in inventory management, process area, 
SAP has got solutions in production solution. It has got solutions in accounts payable and receivables. It has got solutions in HR, delivery, BA, sales, everywhere. Each of the modules SAP has got solution. So therefore, and also SAP R3 allows the integration of all of a company's all the business operations in an overall system for planning, controlling, and monitoring. With SAP, these integrations are is also possible if they want to run independently. That is also possible. Okay. So now you could see here. As I said SAP stands for Systems, Applications, and Products. You see, these are systems client systems, application system, database system, okay. Applications means these are various applications, financial applications, logistical applications, HR applications, so on and so forth. Now let's discuss the products, SAP stands for systems, applications and products. Now I'm going to discuss about the products. Product means these products have been built on top of the existing core applications or core modules. Okay, there are various uh, new dimensional products available to start with uh, supply chain management, SAP's APO, Advanced Plan and Optimizer, of course, which is part of SEO, <coughs> and also Business Information Warehouse or simply BW, Business Warehouse, Supplier Relationship Management. Corporate Finance Management, Customer Relationship Management, Knowledge Warehouse, Strategic Enterprise Management, Business One, um, something called FSCM, sub Financial Supply Chain Management, Treasury Management, Transportation Management, all these things, these are all new dimensional products. Okay, on top of it, you have got something called IS, Industry Specific Tools like IS Oil, IS Retail, uh, this IS Banking, IS Automobile, these are also called industry specific solutions. <laughs> these are also being referred as products. Okay, mysap.com and internet, um, like as you know, nowadays everybody is, you know, providing are enabling the applications to port on to the internet. Without internet enable, enabling on the certain application, it is handicapped. So SAP don't want to lag behind its competitors. So what they did was SAP, you know, changed the architecture technically. This is from the technical perspective, okay, which you will not be knowing it unless you are uh, an ABAPAR or an administrator, system administrator, you will not be seeing this one. So what SAP thought was, if we don't provide internet enability for the SAP applications, we might lag behind competitors. So keep that in mind, SAP has introduced something called SAP NetWaver technology, which is basically provides internet enability to existing SAP applications. Okay, with internet enability, you can, um, you know, mount a certain application, you can personalize it, basically. Okay, let's say Venkat, as a buyer, he will have his own personal settings. Maybe somebody else will have his own personal settings. Some other person will have his or her own personal settings, which can be possible with internet enability. Right, there is something called <coughs> tools for configuring R3. We will have various tools once you are at the implementation project, you may have to work with multiple tools. The first and foremost is IMG, Implementation Guide, whether you are an MM consultant, SD consultant, or FIC work, or whether you are doing in um, SAP ECC system, or whether you are working in uh, SRM system, or you are working in SCM system, every system will have IMG, Implementation Guide, and that's the tool where you will be doing configuring as per the requirements taken from the customer. Then there is something called SAP Office which basically stores, edits the various documents which we use it for maintaining information for a project. So this is something like a, a, a project management tool. Okay, so it contains all the 
information. <coughs> then there is something called business navigator which provides the graphical views of the various business processes like you know process flow diagrams. Then there is something called R3 analyzer which is basically again a tool uh, which the developers uses like you know which standard program has got which features where to tweak, where is the enhancement spot to you know modify certain thing and the coding and stuff like that. They use this R3 analyzer. And then there is one more thing called a reference model. This reference model contains the best practices, the samples, okay. Uh, so therefore you can pick and choose a certain process and make modifications to those processes a process according to your customer requirement. By doing this you need not have to develop an application right from the scratch. Whatever is Whatever can be retained from the standard process, you retain it. Whatever needs to be changed, modified, you do it. Oh, for that's, that's where this reference model is used. And then there is something called accelerated SAP, which is again a tool which is basically meant for implementation projects. And then there is something called solution manager, that's also a different tool which we can use it for multiple purposes for configuration purpose, for documentation purpose, for uh, communication with SAP on the issues, uh, the issues in the standard programs or even you can use it as a supporting tool. Once the product goes live, you have to have some support tool with which you can uh, submit the ticket to the supporting team. So for all these purposes, we use I mean in case if you want to use a SAP tool which is solution manager. Right. So we have discussed uh, one reason for SAP success. The strength of SAP is lies in its high degree of integration. You see a few more advantages of reasons for SAP. One is security. Information maintained in SAP is client based information, technically client. Uh, so therefore it is highly secure. Integration like I said Across models or across systems is very very tight, so therefore uh, um, this is another advantage of reason. And then enterprise wide solutions, it's not just uh, you know SAP provides solutions for uh, management or for finance, SAP does provide solutions for virtually all the uh, what you call uh, the process areas or the modules or the applications that a customer will have. So, Enterprise wide applications. You need, once you buy SAP, if you want to uh, implement SAP in all the mo in all the process areas, you can do so. If, uh, for example, HR module, if you are not implementing with SAP, you wanted to go with PeopleSoft, that's your management decision. But SAP does have got it's SAP HR. You can actually use HR. So likewise, enterprise wide applications and enterprise wide solutions are possible with. Uh, SAP. Then there is something called best business practices. Let's say you are implementing SAP for a, for a banking company, ICICI. See, in, a, in banking you have got different MNCs, local companies, etc. State Bank of India, ICICI Bank, City Bank, okay, Standard Chartered Bank, whatever banks. When I am implementing a, a process, as you might be knowing, for example, one application called um, deposit money into the savings account right see this is application deposit money into the savings account you will have options by cash by check by white transfer etc etc that's a feature right but deposition of money into the stand, into the savings account is an application which would have been there in each of the bank and how they deposit money you will have different steps, assume it 10 steps. Out of 10 steps, maybe 5, 6, 7 will have been common. You have to fill the deposit slip, that is one common phenomena. That slip needs to be given it to the accounting clerk. Cloud will, the, the accounting clerk will check the details, verifies it. If it corrects, then he stamps it and give it to you. Then probably after a week, sorry, after a, an hour or a few minutes, you will actually enter the details into your bank, into your account and then an email or a message needs to be sent to the 
customer right so all these things these are various process steps maybe bank to bank the process steps may vary but how much percentage maybe 10 maybe 15 maybe 20 percentage so the 20 percentage deviation instead of you know building an application with you know like from scratch you copy the existing one the, whatever is not suiting you remove that one add your own piece of code that's the best practice so SAP gives you such kinds of option either for hello did somebody join really can you guys hear me hello I'm not getting any response from any of you can you all hear me Yes, sir. This yeah. is Ra yes. yes, sir. This is Radhika. I'm able to hear you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Similarly, SAP does support multiple currencies. SAP has got support for multilingual. So we, it supports more than uh, I would say. I think 40 languages or uh, more than 150 currencies. So therefore, these are all the reasons for SAP's success. Now, better integration, like you know what the wheel which we have seen a couple of screens ago. Now you see here, these are, you take any industry, whether it is a banking or a manufacturing or a service, any industry will have various departments, for example, sales, customers, um, you know, inventory, production, purchasing, so on and so forth. These departments, either they, they may work independently or they may, they may work uh, you know, in communication with other departments. Whether they are working independently or, uh, or not, the communication has to flow between these two or rather all these departments. I mean to say cross-application communication or cross-module communication or cross-process area communication or information exchange is mandatory for any company to work successfully. So with SAP this integration is quite good. That's what I wanted to say here. Right. Then there is something called impact analysis. You see here, let's say this is just a pond of water. Okay, you take you, you assume it as a swimming pool, right? So you have got various paper boats thrown into the swimming pool. Okay, this FISD, MM, PM, PP, etc. These are modules. And these are nothing but the <coughs> what you call paper boards. Now you ask a, a small child to throw a stone into the standstill water. What does it happen? What will happen? Waves will get generated, and these waves, when it hits these paper boards, paper boards get, you know, they get fluctuated. So that means what paper boards getting affected. I'm sorry. Any questions? So let's let let's try to you know apply the same thing to SAP. Let's say you have a you have an up and running system with all these modules FISD, MM, PM, PPSD, C4, etc. etc. Now you make a change to a process you as a functional consultant you need to understand what is the impact of this change in other applications okay simply throwing a stone is nothing but making a change to the existing process you need to identify where exactly and in which places it is affecting that's your responsibility you have to do that SAP has got such facilities and then these are various advantages you can see integration of various modules is possible quite um, good in fact faster and cheaper because you are you have got a process model where you know um, more than thousand ready-made processes are available you adopt a process according to your customer requirement and then modify according to your customer requirements you need not have to build the application right from the scratch that's the advantage and therefore it is faster and cheaper what we call it as RAD, Rapid Application Development Tool. And then real-time reporting. Like I said, the PO created just now can be used for reporting purpose. 
multiple languages. It supports more than 40 plus languages and currencies of 200 plus currencies can support more than 225 countries are supported in SAP with reduced manpower you can process the same application with same or increased efficiency. So these are various advantages of SAP. Now let's try to make you understand what are our three components. There will be three components if I have to say. Look at here. The first one is an application component where all these applications are used by the end users. Master data team create master data objects. The end users like buyers create purchase orders like that is transactional data. But to create master data or to, or to create transactional data, what you require? You require above programs. Without program, nobody can create a master data or a transactional data. But where, who will create these things? Above programs are created by the developers. But programs, okay, that's fine. Programs does created by the developers. So what is the basis for program to work? You have to have something called organizational structure to be available. You have to set up some key data elements. You have to set up some functionality configuration or what we call it as process configurations needs to be built. All these things were built by the functional consultants. So therefore, as you can see here, unless you have an organization structure or unless you have key data elements and functional configuration, ABAP programs will not work. If there are no ABAP programs, master data, neither transactional data nor master data can be maintained. Right? So these, these are the uh, benefits or the, the what you call the process flow for working with the SAP components. <laughs> Let me try to help you understand what is customization versus configuration. See customization is nothing but adopting the customer requirements to or adopting software to suit the customer requirements or to suit the customer specific needs. This customization can be done by two means, one by configuration, second one is by coding. Okay, so configuration means what? This is configuration. The one, the yellow strip that you see here below is called configuration. This can be done by either by configuration, customization, or, or you can do this configuration or by coding also. Coding means what? About programming, the middle one. Sometimes it is both also, right? So either by configuration or by coding. Coding requires big effort because you have to code everything right from the scratch. Whereas configuration is not like that. Okay, so you will have some few mouse clicks, uh, check boxes needs to be checked, some key data elements needs to be selected. That's how the configuration is done. Right, finally the scope of the uh, SAP you could see there is a big circle. The outer circle, assume it, this represents a particular, uh, okay. Uh, the outer circle represents all the industries. The inner one, the inner circle represents a specific industry. For example, automobile industry, okay. Automobile, this, the inner circle is representing automobile industry. Means automobile industry has got these many applications to run. Right? Now you see here this particular um, elliptical shape. This is a specific company requirements. For example, in case of automobile industry, assume it is a company called General Motors or let's say Ford. Okay? So this, 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 this yellow elliptical shape is the requirements of a particular company called Ford Motors. Now you could see here majority of the part of this ellipse has been covered in the inner circle. That means what majority of the things can be done by standard SAP programs. You just have to identify what is meant for which purpose. So accordingly you configure your system. Now you could see there is something in between the between these two circles. The one that is in between these two circles is the what we call it as gap. How to minimize this gap? Okay, you can either minimize this gap by simply writing your own piece of code 
that is what we call it as development right sometimes the development may not be a possibility or the customer may not want to replace a certain application which has been running for quite a number of years so these pieces the, the pending pieces which you could see this is non sap application where the customer do not want to replace or sap genuinely might not have any solution for that particular piece so if you can leave this piece apart you could see here more than 95 percent of percent has been covered in sap so that's what we call it as sap solution scope i wanted to go with this load of a function consultant towards the end so i'll keep this for some time any questions on this part from anybody give me another half an hour i would be able to complete the um, demo session Functional. Silence. Can I assume no questions from anybody? Okay. Now, look at here. So, this is what we call as a supply chain um, image. You see here on one extreme end you have got one vendor, uh, vendor, on the other extreme end you have got a consumer. So in this linear diagram, if I have to say, there is something called inbound logistics and there is also something called outbound logistics. It means all the activities, logistical activities performed uh, on the incoming material is called inbound logistics and all the activities that you perform on the outgoing material is called outbound logistics. So the combination of both inbound and outbound logistics is nothing but supply chain management. So now within the supply chain, where does MM fits in? That's that's what our piece. So you see here, vendor is located on the extreme end from whom you procure the material. So if you want to procure the material, you have got something called MM purchasing. So this is where it fits in. Once you bring, once you raise a purchase order, vendor delivers the material to you. Once the material is delivered, you keep it in in uh, you keep it in uh, what we call stores, okay? Which is nothing but a warehouse. Once you have the material available in the waste warehouse, you have to give it a shop floor for manufacturing it, okay? So once the product is manufactured, it will come back to the go down where packaging etc will be done. Once it is packed, it will be shipped and transported and then distributed to a wholesaler from a wholesaler it will be delivered to a retail customer from a retail customer it will be sold to an end user where the product dies okay so <coughs> sorry in between you have got different modules different applications to work with so here is your sap mm which is integrated with vendor management and also there are a few more things which i have not specified here that we will see it in the next couple of screens. So, if somebody asks you, what is SAP MM all about? You can say in one sentence, MM application module supports the day-to-day -day activities of procurement and inventory functions carried out for a particular organization. Okay? So, it basically deals with the day-to-day -day activities of inventory, purchasing, so on and so forth. So, now let's try to understand uh, what are the topics that we are going to cover in SAP MM. We will discuss about architecture, okay, the same architecture, what is single tier, two tier, three tier, uh, in which tier, which application components will be available, which, will, which one will be used for communication purpose. So, all these things we discuss it in the first class. Okay, and also we also discuss about the system landscape. What is system landscape? What is development system? What is quality assurance system? What is production or life system? Where the transport is triggered? Where from where it should move? What is transport request? What is customizing request? 
what is workbench request all these things we will discuss it in uh, the next class the first class then we will discuss about organization structure what is an organization structure what is its importance why do we require an organization structure what are the components available within the organization structure which organization element is responsible or a main what is the main organization element for finance main organization element for mm purchasing main organization element for mm inventory so on and so forth we discuss it we will create one complete organization structure we take one company whose business you aware of it and then we set up one company code two three plants so on and so forth that's your second chapter once you create an organization structure we will be dealing with the master data again master data can be broadly divided into financial master data logistics master data wherever possible we will copy the financial master data from the existing system from which are the client from which we copy our company code and so on and so forth whereas logistic master data we will create our own then you know we will discuss in detail about material master various configuration aspects of material master we will discuss about vendor master what is vendor master where the data gets saved what are the levels okay so what are the additional levels where the data gets saved what is partner function vendor partner function so all these things vendor management all these things we will do it here in the vendor master then we go with mm overview like uh, what do we mean by external procurement what is in house production so which document is required for which purpose how to create those documents all those things we will discuss it in mm overview and then there is something called external procurement or what we call it as purchasing cycle okay so purchasing cycle this is end to end what we call it as um, p to p purchase to procure so we discuss about this entire procurement cycle various documents that we create various document types that we use and uh, individual documents basic purpose all these things we will discuss it in the procurement cycle then we discuss about what we call uh, the individual objects within the procurement cycle whether it is purchase requisition or a purchase order or rfq or a bid or any, any invitation we will just go and discuss all those objects so one once we complete um, you know the external procurement we will go with definition and configurations of various purchasing documents that we use to start with purchasing info record rfq request for quotation quotation excel purchase order contract scheduling agreement quota arrangement so on and so forth there will be many more documents so all these documents we will review we will configure and we work with them once we complete the purchasing we work with inventory management we discuss about the overall picture of inventory management and then we go with each of the sub topics within inventory management to start with goods receipt by what is goods receipt types of goods receipt planned goods receipt unplanned goods receipt goods they see with difference to PO, goods they see with difference to PO, right? So all these things we will discuss it. And then similarly goods issues, planned issues, unplanned issues, similarly transfer posting, types of transfer postings, um, and then transfer posting at plant level, at storage location level, or at uh, company code level. So all these things we will discuss it in inventory management and also there is something called physical inventory 
we discuss about physical inventory as well okay various types of physical inventory processes like you know uh, so those things and then the physical inventory process itself so all these things we will discuss it and then there is something called invoice verification once the vendor delivers the material you have to deliver you, you have to post the invoice so while posting invoice what are the things that you are going to check it how to verify those things right is there any tolerances or are there any blocks for this invoice if there are any blocks how to avoid it how to release the blocks right so all these things we will discuss it in invoice verification and then there is something called special procurement chapter which basically contains five special procurement types something called um, consignment subcontracting pipeline okay third party sales order processing and then stock transport order okay so we we'll go with each of these five topics and then material valuation okay so this is very very critical material valuation important chapter so this is where you define how a certain process in inventory management or how a certain process in invoice verification will affect the valuation of the material so this will be covered in detail from the automatic account assignment perspective so and also we will discuss various processes affecting material valuation whether it is goods receipt or invoice receipt or uh, something else so we will discuss about these processes and then there is something called valuation and account determination this is what we call it as automatic account determination so here we discuss about uh, various automatic account determination techniques that we use and then there is something called split valuation valuating the same material of the, or evaluating the substructs of same material differently that is what we call the split valuation so even this also we will discuss about this and then there is something called classification classification is again of multiple types material classification batch classification vendor classification customer classification po classification so on and so forth so we discuss material classification and then we go with uh, after classification we go with batch management okay so without classification batch management will not work without batch management um, there will be so many things which may not be possible so so we will discuss in detail about the classification and batch management so within batch management we have got various topics like um, you know batch validity shelf life expiration date batch status management etc etc so all these things from the batch management perspective we discuss it and then there is something called cbp or mbp material requirement planning or consumption based planning this is from the mm perspective how to use this one what are the settings required what are the configurations required okay how to generate an order proposal automatically so all these things we will discuss it in cb consumption based planning then we will see how an mrp works we will see the service flows we will see the integration points when we work with mm uh, what you call uh, uh, um, the valuation okay that is called MMFI integration similarly when you are working with MRP conversion based planning you will be integrating between MM module with uh, PP module similarly when you are adding uh, when you are working with a special procurement scenario called third party sales or processing you will be working with MM with SD okay so all these points will be covered as and when they come into picture 
we will discuss about ASAP methodology in and out, in and out about ASAP methodology, various phases, uh, what what needs to be implemented in which phase, etc. And who will be carrying out the activity. So all these things we'll discuss about what we call the ASAP methodology. And finally, let's try to understand the role of a functional guide. The role of any functional consultant is first and foremost role is customizing the product, customizing the respective business case or a business area or application area and making sure that the system reacts in a manner according to the constraints of this um, use case. Okay. So therefore you have to first understand Okay, so you have to first understand what is the customer requirement. Accordingly, you will configure, you will make your system. Then there is something called developments, right? Uh, sorry, documents and the settings and prepare, prepare proper guidelines. For example, you may be uh, a consultant for today and nobody is sure that whether you will be available after a week or not. There is a good possibility that, you know, same person may not be available. So therefore, for that purpose, each and every product documentation needs to be maintained with proper settings. Okay, that that is being used as a training manual <coughs> for the new folks. So therefore, this needs to be created. Then takes care that proper training is given to the end users and that the system is usable. It's not that, you know, whether uh, it's been used in, um, it, it's working properly in quality issues but not working in live system. No, that's not the way. So therefore, wherever you are going with it, it should, uh, I mean, the, the application should run properly. Then takes care that proper training is given to the users and the system is usable performing appropriately. It means, Let's say when you are here, system is working. When you are not there, system will not work. That's not the way that you should set up. So therefore, you should be in a position to take care of proper training is given to the end users so that they will not miss things. And also, system should be in a usable condition. Go live assistance for the technical team. Basically, go live means you have to specify the table and the function. You have to specify the table and the data functionality what what data needs to be copied from the table so therefore I mean the go live activity will be performed by the system administration team where they require the coordination or they require the help of viewers because a field coming from whole system should come and seek into a new field so that's where you require your functional expertise for the go live Similarly, the main duty of the consultant is to transfer external know-how to the client. It's not the manpower that comes, but the intelligence, understanding of the processes, the feeling for defects and general comments. So, you as a consultant, you should be able to transfer the knowledge on what you have set up, how you have set up, what are the potential issues that you might encounter. So all these things, because you are a functional guy, you must be knowing bits and pieces at least. So therefore, you have to record them. You have to build the chart of these things. And once you complete the uh, MM module, where is jobs available, like functional con contact or consultant, buyer, purchasing assistant role, stores in charge, master data, maintenance, so various jobs are, are already available. Okay, so that's all I have with me on the presentation. Now let me just quickly show you the the, um, the syllabus or the content.
que eu tomei de letra sua. Isso. Não me lembro igual a minha letra. Ok? As you could see here, we'll go with the classification and batch management material requirement. Okay. Let's start this. Let me show you the word file, I think, which contains a better which gives you a better picture. I thought I should be having the word file also. Arnam syllabus. Okay, so MMOR view once again we will go with MMOR view like a system landscape, navigation in SAP, project structure, that's the first class and then second class onwards we will go with the maintenance of organization structure, it may take two, two days roughly and then general settings, what you need to maintain in the general settings and then general settings specific for MMOR view that also we will do then the master data maintenance, between master, vendor master, okay. So you could see here, I'll share all these um, enough files to you. And then in the purchasing, we'll go with each of these areas, purchasing cycle, purchasing info record, various types of purchasing info record, source list, purchase liquidation, purchase um, order, RFQ, bid invitation, bids, Okay, so various control indicators that we use or control parameters that we use, quotation, outline agreement. Okay, so all these things we will discuss it in the next two months session. Okay, I'll forward to everyone about um, these files. Okay, and finally towards the end, ASAP methodology, chain request transportation production support issues, okay, conversion of business requirements into functional specifications, question and answers, okay, system configuration, right, so maybe resume preparation was not there here, so I might help you in resume preparation as well. Okay, so that's all I have. Any questions from anybody? First of all, how do you feel about this? Is this um, online training? I, I don't know uh, whether you have attended earlier or not. Uh, how do you feel? Um, is it okay? Are you able to see my screen, screen after screen? Is my voice audible? You might have some apprehensions like, you know, uh, classroom training would be better than online training. Uh, um, so what are apprehensions you might have? So um, how do you feel it? Is audio audible? I mean, is my voice audible? Is my screen visible to you properly? Any comments from anybody? Hello? Yeah, Hello? Chapan, Chapan Radhika. Sir, this is Radhika. Everything is okay, sir. I'm able to hear you properly, but this is the first time wherein I'm attending the online training. Mm -hmm. So it will take some time for me to get adjusted with this. With this. Yeah. But uh, other things are quite okay. Okay. I guess Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi has left in the middle. Uh, Japa Vidra, please. Uh, sir, uh, everything is okay, but if you use uh, more of a notepad or something, scribbling pad, so it will be more easy for us understanding. Exactly. I, I opened this one purposefully. Uh, the Excel mm -hmm. file is only meant for that. Okay, but I, I did not maintain anything here. 
but uh, going forward when we are actually you know uh, doing on the system or when we actually go with the uh, actual classes I normally use Excel file because you know you keep adding 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 over here if I open okay. note, notepad I might not be able to mm. save pictures sometimes I may I may create a, 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 I, I open the paint uh, mm -hmm. like this I open the paint maybe I can show you the one that I've used it for the last uh, batch just give me a moment okay looks like I've deleted that hello yeah Sunil hello. Yeah. Warehouse management. Desktop. I'm sorry, Andy. Your voice is not audible. No. Um. It's good now. Please. This course. Yeah. Do we di do we discuss any uh, warehouse management topics? I'll give you warehouse overview, but not the entire warehouse management. Because um, in my early days, between 2004 to 2006, that is uh, up to the time when I, I mean, or rather, since I started SRM practice in 2006, I stopped working in warehouse management. But between 2004 to 2006, I used to work in MM and uh, WM, warehouse management. So I'll give you warehouse management overview of the processes. I don't give you demos. I don't demonstrate on the system but I'll give you the process overviews. Okay, so now it is normally they are asking the warehouse management as well. If you go as a MM consultant, is it right or no that's not that's not hundred percent correct. When you are going for an MM consultant they'll ask you MM and they'll ask you do you have any knowledge process or your process understanding of WM. Yeah, I do ask if somebody is joining in my team as well. So I expect I don't expect him to, you know, work in warehouse management, but if I say what is warehouse number, he should be able to understand. If I say storage type, he should be able to understand. Right? So that process overview, I'll give it. Maybe a couple of classes, one or two classes at max. Oh, yeah. Hi, Vangar, this is Sudhakar. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not sure about others. Uh, how about the hands-on training? Uh, is it something which you provide or do we need to equip ourselves? All right. Uh, let me show you this one. See, as I told you, the online uh, server access, let's say, uh, I should be having one system. I see a vehicle. I think this is the one. Okay, so look at here, this is an online system, online access which I use. Uh, I, I may use this one or maybe I may use this one, KVR, uh, even this one as well. See, like this, you will have it. You don't find anything or any deviation or any slowness or something like that. It's as if, um, okay, like that you see here. I might use this system or I might use someone, somebody, some, some other system also, but you can see it here. So this, this particular um, server is not, not mine. I have taken it for the rental purpose. So I will provide online access to all of you upon the payment of the fee. So uh, I mean whoever is interested, you can um, you know, attend a couple of sessions. Uh, and then once you pay me, I will ask the person from whom I am taking this server, I will ask him to create a, a user account for you and that you need to maintain it uh, on your logon pad as you probably might be knowing it. You see this is your logon pad, you just have to go with new item, I will provide you some details, I in the sense the person from whom I will take the server access, he will give you details, you just have to fill it and then go with finish. Once you are done with it, you will be having a link like this. And then once you click on log on, you will have access. So it will be very, very smooth and uh, log SAP uh, access that I provide. Even if you have an issue, some any issue, any kind of issue in the SAP system, 
that guy will resolve in not more than an hour time any day so um i i'm i'm hundred percent confident on the system access okay okay so from when uh, we would expect this access uh, at like i said as soon as you pay me the fee i'll have to pay okay. to him i'll have to pay to him 800 rupees per month per user account so i'm telling you that one up front excel so that i will pay it to him okay and then once he gives me the details i'll forward it to you you just have to you know uh, add it and use the system right Any other questions? And we, we can use that online account any time, right? Any moment, round the clock. I will provide access for, for 24, uh, sorry, for two months. I mean, I am expecting the sessions to be completed in about 50, 51, uh, not more than 55, definitely. Mm -hmm. So it covers for about two months period. So for these two months, I will be paying him up front. So, you will have access for two months. After two months, it's your responsibility. If you want to continue with access, you have to pay him 800 rupees per month and he will continue. I mean, he will keep your uh, uh, access uh, or account live so that you can use it. If you don't want to or if you want to discontinue using that system, uh, I will ask him to terminate the account. Okay. Is there any questions from your end? Nothing. Uh, nothing was. Thank you. Sundar Agar, Unar Andi. I guess he is on mute. All right. Um, so this is how it's going to be. So um, I'll first. Uh, like the screenshots I'll, I'll, I'll display, I'll explain you. Okay, so let me stop recording because this, okay, so let it be. Um, I'll, I'll display the screens, I'll explain you the intricacies or the nuances of various components, objects, the tools, settings, whatever I will do as a functional consultant. And then I'll create some master data in the sense, I'll do the end user activity first. I'll go back to configurations. I'll configure it. I'll once again come back and then do end user activity so that you know you can see the effects of configurations that you will be doing it. And then we will go with the process configurations. So that's how we move. In between, as and when, if I have to write uh, something, I will open the Excel file or, or the notepad. As if I'm writing on the board, I will be writing it over here. And then move, move, move forward, backward towards my SAP screens, my uh, PowerPoint presentations, or to the um, the notepad or the drawing board, something like that. And uh, I'll record all the files, all the sessions. Once the session is completed, I'll go with stop recording, as you can see on my screen, and um, I will be, I mean that recorded session will be there on my machine. I'll forward the link to the um, recorded session or I will ask you to go to a, a place, there is something called Dropbox, which is again an online um, uh, application from which you can download the shared content, which I'm going to keep it out there. So you can download this um, recorded session and you can play as many times as you want. Similarly, all the soft copies which I sh I display during the class, I'll also share that one. And in case if you want that uh, the Excel file on which I will be writing every day, whether it is Excel file or the Notepad or Word, whatever it is, I will also share that with you so that you know you can use it as a reference. We can't hear you. Just to put a open in, sir. Oh, you put a open in there. Right. <laughs> Just to open in there. Right, sir. Any questions, Sandy, from your end?
So all right, if, if you don't have any questions, um, that's all for the day from my side. We will have the class every day morning, um, same time around 10 o'clock. But if you guys would like to come by 9.30, 9.30 also fine for me. So initially to start with, we will go with um, an hour and a half for first couple of weeks so that you know you will get adjusted to the pace and the this kind of training so once you are okay. comfortable we may extend by half an hour or if you are okay. fine with it we will keep on doing one and a half hour session for Monday to Saturday if is com if it is comfortable for all of you on Sunday because you know one person is there in uh, US another person is there in UK and a few more people are there at different places if it is comfortable and convenient for everybody we will have a session on Sunday otherwise Sunday is uh, there will not be any session for Sunday so that will uh, decide the uh, end of the week sir no problem sir first, first few weeks couple of weeks let's not have the class on Sunday you practice okay. yeah you practice it yeah. you, you get accustomed to this uh, kind of environment and then let's take a call okay, okay sir could we make it as 9:30 uh, your time so that uh, because anyway yeah. you'll start after 15 minutes or something like that typically yeah i'm okay andy uh, is everybody okay with 9:30 am india time because somebody is there in U.S. and the end of our our time is 10 p.m. his time. So it, it's going to be a little late for him. So it would be good uh, from our side if, you, if we can, you know, available by 9.30. 9 or 9.30, sir? 9.30 and 9 uh, I may not be available because I will be there in Reliance by 9 o'clock. Okay, 9, 9.30. Yeah. So can we make Senna. it 9.30? Can we all make it 9.30? Maybe five minutes here and there. Maybe first five ten minutes I will explain about the the previous class details and in case if somebody has got questions in the previous class, I'll try to explain in the first five ten minutes. But uh, I mean, if, if, if you are all, all are okay with nine thirty, uh, I think that's good. Uh, sir, what I think is being the first day today, we wasted some time, but. I think from going forward from tomorrow onwards on dot we can start from 10 o'clock I think if everybody is okay. Not 10 anyhow okay. we have to start because I cannot uh, I know <laughs> yeah, it, it beyond o'clock. So if 9.30 yeah. would be best best fit for me. Why? Even if I take 2 hour session 9.30 to 11.30 I need half an hour to you know fresh up myself and go to my office. So 9.30 would be best fit for me, but because you know uh -huh. you said like you guys are working in US time zone, so maybe 9, 9, right, 9 yeah. would be slightly tough for you. So can you, can you 3, can you 3 please make it by 9.30? Mm. I, uh, I'll talk to Pavitra and Lakshmi and I'll get back to you sir regarding this. Okay. So Sridhar, uh, let's have the class tomorrow at 10 o'clock um, and then, you know, let, let's take a judgment tomorrow. If it is okay with you. It's okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. A anything else, Andy? Uh, any improvements or suggestions uh, from your end? Um, I'll be happy to receive it and appreciate your suggestions or comments, anything. Nothing as such, sir. Everything was good today. Is it possible to see your webcam? Um, sorry to say, I don't have webcam. But I can. Is it possible I, to see your? Uh... I can show you my picture in case it can. <laughs> Give me a moment. Yeah, this is my picture. So we can spot you whenever you go somewhere on these roads, you know. That's me. That's my office in Switzerland. Okay. Anything else, Andy? I'll I'll stop recording.
the session